Hi, I'm Matt Dickin, and this is Strategic Wealth. On today's show... All right, what I wanted to talk about this week is basically who do we work best with as a firm? Yeah, it is guaranteed. It's, it's guaranteed by the strength and stability of the company that you're investing in. Well, that really depends on the situation. That's just a little bit of what you're going to see right now. Welcome to this week's show. Thank you for watching once again. We've got a brand new segment that you want to make sure that you stay tuned to. We're going to have a lot of fun with it. We have a lot of great information we're going to bring to you once again this week. So let's not waste any time. Let's go ahead and get started with this week's Money Minute. I had a couple of friends whose fathers both worked at the same company doing what I understood to be basically the same job. And when I would go to one of the houses, it seemed like they argued about money a lot. They were always fighting about money. If the car broke down, they really didn't have any money to pay to get it fixed. So the other friend was the complete opposite of that. They never talked about money. And I asked my parents, I said, what's, what's going on here? What's the difference? And they tell me, well, Matt, one family probably budgets and plans and saves, and then the other family just spends everything, so when an emergency comes up, there's no money left over. And I said, well, I've got an idea to help the family that doesn't budget, plan, and save. What I told them I was going to do was start a company, and when they get their paychecks, what they could actually do is send their checks to my company. I would pay all of their bills for them, put a little money in savings, and then I would pay them an allowance, because that's what I was used to getting. My parents looked at me and they said, well, Matt, you know, we don't really think anybody's going to turn their money over to uh, an 11 or a 12-year-old, but they said that what you're talking about sounds a lot like what a financial planner would do for someone. I made the decision that, okay, well, then that's what I want to do when I grow up. That's something that was instilled in me at a very early age. Most people were taught, you don't talk about your finances. You know, you don't, you don't do that. You don't talk about it. You should be able to take care of it on your own. It's okay to need help. Individuals are concerned, will their retirement nest egg last as long as they need it to? The economy is changing rapidly. Things are different today than what they were 15, 20, or 30 years ago. So you can't use the same strategy and think that they're going to work as well today. Our clients have worked so hard throughout the course of their lives to accumulate the assets that they do have. People have questions. They, they want answers. And there are so many different routes that you can go today. One of the things that we're really good at doing is solving the problem, repositioning their assets to where they will have guaranteed income for life, and putting them really in a much better position than what they were when we first met them. Numerous studies that have shown over the years that the vast majority of individuals, when they go into retirement, will actually go into retirement without having enough money to maintain their standard of living and make it to their life expectancy. You know, there are a lot of good advisors that are out there that will help you accumulate your retirement nest egg but you really need different strategies. Once you stop accumulating your nest egg and start distributing your nest egg to generate income. Matt's vision's always been quite simple. Security, protecting your assets, and getting a reasonable rate of return. It may sound like old hat because you've heard it so many times, but people need to hear it. They need to know that they have that sort of option. We want to move you from a maybe environment into a guaranteed environment because you do have a choice. What we've actually experienced in years where the stock market goes down in value is we have a lot of clients that call us and thank us because they don't have to worry about losing 10 or 15 or 20 percent of more of their retirement assets. You know, Mark, I meet with individuals all the time that are closer into retirement. They're just carrying way too much risk in their portfolio. I really enjoy being able to take someone that's just not really sure if they can retire yet or not, or maybe they're already retired and they're just not really sure if the money's going to last as long as they need it to. And I like being able to take them through our process and hopefully at the end be able to share with them and educate them and prove to them that they don't really have anything to worry about. There's no better way for us to continue to get our message out to our clients than to have them watch our show on TV. You, know, you can have your money in a safer position, but still see it grow at a reasonable return. Have them listen to the radio. Good morning, Kentuckiana, and welcome back to the Matt Dickin Show. Where we and to make them feel better about the decisions that they've made, because essentially we preach the same message over and over and over. I think it makes people more comfortable with walking in the door and knowing exactly who he is before they even meet him. 
Good afternoon, Strategic Wealth Designers. Marcy speaking. How may I direct your call? We have a really good team. Everybody is very cohesive. When the clients first walk into the office, they're really kind of taken back by our lobby. I think it really helps them feel at home. Those folks that come in here, they've lived life right. They're looking for an ethical person to handle their money. And I think once you get to know Matt and meet him, he's just like he is on the TV or the radio, very approachable, extremely smart. Personally, Matt is a lot of fun. He is always in an upbeat mood. So even if you are not in such a great mood, he can pull you out of that mood and make your day so much brighter and better. And really something that comes off, I think, immediately when you meet Matt is the passion that he has for the job, uh, for what he's doing. You know, he loves coming to work, he loves what he does, and really that rubs off on us. We all really put a lot of effort, a lot of energy into making sure that everything runs as smoothly as possible. The main reason that Matt started doing this stuff is just simply to help people out, and that's absolutely the most satisfying aspect of the job is just to make sure that at the end of the day when people leave our office, they're in a better situation than when they came in. What we like to try and do is take the maybes out of the equation. The majority of our clients prefer to have guarantees and certainties that they won't run out of money before they run out of life. Let's protect your assets. Let's keep it simple. We help retirees and pre-retirees protect and preserve their retirement nest eggs so they can provide guaranteed income that will last them the rest of their lives. You're watching Strategic Wealth with Matt Dickin. It's Smart Money Television. And now it's time for X's and O's with Coach Matt. Come on, let's go. All right, what I wanted to talk about this week is basically who do we work best with as a firm? You know, with having the TV show, we've been having a lot of individuals call us and saying, Matt, are you the right advisor for me? Who do you work best with? What do you specialize in? And, and we always say up front, you know, we can't help everybody. The type of things that we specialize in and focus in isn't necessarily for everyone. But when we can help someone, there's basically three main things that we're going to focus on or that we basically have to agree on as far as what our priorities are going to be. Now, primarily, we'll work with those that are retired or soon to be retired, meaning they're within about 10 years of retirement. So typically, at that point in your lives, safety becomes a bigger priority. So safety is our number one goal when working with someone. We don't want to lose any money. We don't want to have any fear of losing money because individuals are too close to retirement, maybe already retired. They don't have time to make up for market drops like we've seen in the past. So safety has to be our number one priority. Now, in addition to keeping their money safe, individuals want to see it grow by a reasonable return. So that's kind of our second priority is basically reasonable returns. Now we define reasonable returns to mean that we need to average returns of somewhere between 6 and 10 percent per year. That's what we consider reasonable. Now when we earn more than 10 percent, which occasionally happens, we'll celebrate. Nobody's ever unhappy that that, that uh, occurred, but typically over time we're going to be somewhere between 6 and 10 percent per year on average with no negative years. That's what we consider reasonable. The third thing that we need to do is we need to try and keep things as simple as we possibly can. We meet with individuals all the time where they're getting 20-page monthly statements, maybe 60-page quarterly statements. They get these statements in the mail. They have no idea what they're looking at. So we want to keep it very, very simple. With us, if things are going up in value, if it's a good economy, you know you're going to get a reasonable rate of return. But if things are going poorly and the stock market is falling, the economy is struggling, you know basically you have a safety net on your account. You don't necessarily have to worry about anything. So when we can help someone, it's because we want to accomplish these three main things. Now the next question that we'll always get is, well, Matt, how do you accomplish that? All right, let me give you an example of what we're talking about. Basically, as an investor, there's different places that you can put your money. So if we try and plot this on a graph, now, as you can tell, I, I'm not an artist, so hopefully all of this will make sense, so just bear with me. But if we were to plot on a graph where we invest our money, obviously over time it's going to react differently. So one place that all investors can invest their money, obviously, is in individual stocks. So let's just assume that this black line here represents having money invested directly in the stock market. So we know money in the market over time, sometimes it goes up in value, sometimes it goes down in value. 
What we're hoping for is that over time we have more money than what we started with. And sometimes that works, unfortunately, other times it doesn't. Now what a lot of individuals will do is they'll say, well, Matt, I don't know what individual stocks to pick, so I would prefer to have my money invested in a mutual fund. So if we were to graph mutual funds here on the board, basically a mutual fund is going to kind of look like this red line. Okay, so it'll basically mirror the performance of the stock market a little bit, but it will typically lag it. There's usually a little bit of a separation. Now we talk about in our educational classes all the time that mutual funds about 80% of the time will underperform the index or the benchmark that they're trying to beat. So they'll usually lag the overall market. Maybe sometimes it's because of performance, but the bigger issue that is typically causing mutual funds to underperform direct investment in the market are the fees that they charge. Typical mutual funds going to have annual fees maybe somewhere between one to possibly as high as 3% per year. When you look at management fees, trading costs, possibly advisory fees, they can get pretty expensive. Now you never get or a bill or an invoice for the fees that they charge and you never see these fees deducted from your account statement because they're basically a hidden cost. Okay, they take it directly out of your performance. So let's walk through an example. Let's say that you have money in mutual funds and let's say you're paying 2% per year in fees, which is pretty common. What will happen is when the stock market rises by 10%, you don't go up by 10, you would only grow by 8% because of the fees. Now when the stock market loses 10%, you won't just lose 10%, you'll actually lose 12% because of the fees. So actually what happens is over time, there's a compounding effect to those fees. The spread starts to get greater and greater and greater. Now we mention all the time that we're not against mutual funds completely. A great time to invest money in mutual funds is when you have what's called an active account, meaning that you are putting money into mutual funds or into your account on a monthly basis. Maybe like a 401k or an IRA, some sort of a 403b, whatever you might have through your employer. Any account that you're putting money into on a monthly basis is what's considered an active account. The reason why that's not a bad time to use mutual funds is because as the market's going up and certainly when it goes down, you don't get excited that the market fell in value, but you're still buying. You're buying along the way. You'll buy more shares at a lower price that'll help you recover more quickly when the market goes up. So you're taking advantage of the volatility. A time that you typically want to avoid having money in mutual funds is in what's called a dormant account. Now a dormant account is any type of an account that you are not putting money into mutual funds. This is where we don't want to invest in mutual funds. So a dormant account could possibly be a previous employer's retirement plan that you haven't rolled over to an IRA, or maybe it is an IRA that you're not contributing to on a monthly basis. What happens on those accounts is when the stock market goes down in value, you're no longer taking advantage of that volatility. You just lose money. And then you have to wait and hope for the account to grow in value and go back up. And because of the fee structure, that can be very difficult to get ahead and stay ahead. So in our office, we're not against mutual funds completely. They definitely have a time and a place. You just have to know when to use them and certainly when to avoid them. And you want to avoid them in dormant accounts. Now, if you have dormant accounts, a lot of times the question will come up, well, Matt, where should I put my money? If we were to take a look at maybe what the banks are offering right now, you know, that would certainly be a safe uh, place to put your money. Pretty simple to understand what the banks are offering to us. So let's say we'll put banks as an option up here. Now, anything that the bank has to offer typically, like we just said, is going to be safe. You know, CDs, money market accounts, as long as you keep the money insured, you don't have to worry about uh, or below the insured limit of $250,000, you don't have to worry about losing anything. It's pretty simple to understand a money market or a CD account, but right now they're just not returning a reasonable rate of return. So that's why I've got it right down here towards the bottom. They're just not paying very much. So an alternative that we'll talk to individuals a lot about uh, when they come into the office is the indexed annuities. And the reason why we'll talk about those accounts is because I think they're probably one of the best kept secrets in the retirement planning market. I just don't hear enough people talking about them. And even if they're talking about them, a lot of times they don't truly understand exactly how they work. So basically with the index annuity, as the market grows, you're going to grow with it. We don't have any fees that we have to worry about, typically, because the company that your money is on deposit with is going to make money on your money while you leave it with them. So we don't have to worry about high fees or expenses. However, there is going to be a maximum that you can earn in the good years. They'll set a limit to how much you can earn when the market goes up. And depending on the account that you have money in, there's maybe upper limits of 8% per year to possibly as high as 20% per year. So what that means is however high the market goes, you can only do as well as whatever your limit is. So let's say in this example, the market grows in one year by maybe 
20 percent. Uh, let's say that you have a 15 percent maximum gain on your account. Uh, so you can't grow by 20 percent. The most you would be able to earn is 15. So let's say we run into a ceiling. Now again, the reason why they put that ceiling there is because when the market goes down in value, both your principal and your growth is always protected. So we don't ever have to give back what we had earned in the previous year when that's followed by a bad year. Okay, you might not make anything, but more importantly, you don't lose anything. You've got a good safety net on the account. Both principal and growth is always protected for you. Now, if we go back to the stock market once again, when the, when the stock market starts to grow, you know, on a mutual fund, if we lost money, we have to wait until we get back to even before we start to realize any growth. Okay, so mutual funds wouldn't be bad if we could lock in our gains, but we can't. So when we lose money, we have to wait till we get back to even to see any gains. On the index annuity, we are always even. We never lost any money at all in the first place. So as the market starts to rally and recover, we just take off right where we left off. Our account grows up to be this limit or this level now. So when we experience another decline in the stock market, we would maintain, we would go sideways again because we've got a safety net. And again, that's basically how the index annuities work. So over time, what we're doing is we're taking advantage of the upswings in the market without having to participate in the downswings. Now, of course, you don't get all these great benefits without a couple of strings that are attached. And I already mentioned one of them. First thing we have is we have a maximum amount of interest that you can earn in the good years. Again, you're capped, you have a limit. You never participate in the downturns of the market, so companies are gonna set a maximum that you can earn in the good years. Typically, once again, that maximum that you can earn is usually somewhere between eight to possibly as high as 20%. Now, you'll know what that maximum is before you invest money, but it just depends on the account that you select. So that's the first string that's attached. The second string that's attached is something that's called time. You have to agree to a certain amount of time before you withdraw all of your funds. That's again, that's why there are no fees, kind of similar to a CD. You know, there's no fees on a CD. It's not as if the bank is doing it for free. They're making money on your money while it's on deposit with them. That's why they don't charge any fees. The same thing is true with the index annuity account. You're making a time commitment, meaning there's a certain period of years before you withdraw all of your money. That's why they don't charge fees. They're gonna make money on your money while it's on deposit with them. The sweet spot in the marketplace as we see it is somewhere between four and 10 years. So if I'm working with somebody that has at least four years before they wanna withdraw all of their funds from their account, the index annuity might be appropriate for them. Now, even if you need to withdraw funds prior to the end of this four-year period, you can take part of the money out each and every year if you need to or if you want to, but you don't have to. But what you can't do, unless you're willing to pay a penalty, is come back and withdraw 100% of your money until you get to the end of the four-year period. There's a couple of exceptions to that. If you have any type of major medical emergency or a premature death, then you can take all the money out typically at any time. But it's got to be something serious. So you're typically going to make some sort of a time commitment and a minimum of four-year commitment to as much as a 10-year commitment. Now, again, similar to CDs, the more time that you agree to, the, the better the accounts can perform. But this is one way, there's other options, but this is one way that investors can keep their money safe because there's an automatic safety net on the account. They can keep their money safe but still see it earn a reasonable rate of return. Again, we're taking advantage of the upswings, not participating in the downswings. We're giving, we're giving up some of the upside potential to, on the flip side, have none of the downside risk. Enjoy an evening with best-selling author and TV talk show host Matt Dickin as he hosts his nationally recognized financial seminar in Kentuckiana. Discover what millions of safety-conscious Americans are doing now to protect and preserve their assets. Can you find growth and security in today's volatile markets? Can you safeguard your hard-earned assets from the IRS? Due to overwhelming demand for these events and limited seating, we recommend that you call now. Operators are standing by 24-7, 502-653-6080. That's 502-653-6080 or go to askmattdickin.com. You're watching Strategic Wealth with Matt Dickin. It's smart money television. A few weeks back on the radio show, we talked about how to have guaranteed income for life. Let's take a look at that. You know, Matt, one of the biggest questions we've gotten on the show here, and uh, I believe it was prompted by one of the financial authors that you had on, uh, I believe the book was named The Pensionless Society. It's, uh, there, there are fewer and fewer folks retiring with a pension, and uh, people are they're, they're hungry for knowledge about, is there something that I can do that will guarantee my income for a lifetime? 
And, and yes, there are some things out there. And maybe you'd like to uh, expand on that a little bit. Yeah. You know, uh, one of the questions that we ask at our financial workshops that individuals can attend is, what is your number one financial concern? And running out of money is, is the top response to that question. Uh, and I think it should be the top response because studies have shown that about 65% of the time that when individuals retire, they're going to actually retire without enough money to maintain their standard of living. You know, Matt, it was funny because I believe one person actually raised their hand and said, living too long. Yeah. And I thought, well, no, they've got it backwards. You're, you're, you don't live too long, you run out of money. Right. So, you know, uh, running out of money actually is individuals' number one fear. Overall, not just financial fear. You know, it used to be public speaking, but now running out of money and studies are showing that that's everybody's number one fear, followed by public speaking, followed by death. So it is a, a, a big issue. And uh, like you mentioned, we've talked about it here on the show in the past. It used to be that individuals would go to work for a company for maybe 20, 30, 40 years, maybe in some cases. And they knew that when they retired, the company was going to take care of them through the use of a, a, a pension plan. And for the most part, those types of plans have gone away. You're still seeing them in, in some cases, but they're being eliminated uh, primarily in, in the uh, private sector. And, and now they're even coming under scrutiny in the public sector as well. So I think moving forward, it's going to be up to individuals themselves to try and find ways to provide this guaranteed income for life. You know, and individuals can still have a guaranteed income for life. And one way of doing that in today's environment is by the use of an annuity mark. Now, a lot of times individuals will say, an annuity, wait a minute, I always heard that those were bad. And a lot of times why individuals will say things like that is they might be used to the old annuities that were available only for previous generations, like maybe something that was called an immediate annuity. And basically the way that worked was you gave a pile of money to an insurance company and they're going to give you some sort of guaranteed income. But if you passed away early, they basically kept it all. Mm -hmm. So if, if you had a premature death, it wasn't a very good deal for your beneficiaries and your There's heirs. nothing like that today yet. Well, they're still out there, but the vast majority of annuities that are available now do not work like that. The vast majority of them will provide some sort of an income for you. But if you pass away, whatever money is left in the account should pass on to your heirs and beneficiaries. It's a good question to ask if you're interested in investing in an annuity, but uh, most of them don't work like the old ones. Matt, I have found that time and time again, almost every night when you do your seminars and you ask people specific seminar questions, not only do you have less than the half of the room that says they know the answer, at times nobody's raising their hand. So it seems to me uh, that there are a lot of questions out there when it comes to annuities, because how many different kinds of annuities are there? Yeah, well, it, you can have the immediate annuity, like we just mentioned, but you have others that are what's called deferred annuities. And those are the ones that you would really want, okay? Those are the ones that if you pass away, whatever's left in the account will go to your heirs and beneficiaries. So really what it falls into is really kind of three different categories. You have variable annuities, which we're not big fans of. Typically, the fees are very, very high on a variable annuity, anywhere from maybe 2 to 6%. Matt, a lot of people have those variable annuities. A lot we of get people a have lot of questions and, mm -hmm. and, and a lot of calls about variable mm -hmm. annuities. Yeah, we're not big fans of them because there's too much risk associated with them, and, and the fees are just too high. On average, probably 4 or 5% wow. per year is what we see. So to put that into context, let's say you have $100,000 in a variable annuity. You could be losing four to five thousand dollars a year in fees. So over a ten year time period, that that's how much? That's forty to fifty thousand dollars. On a hundred thousand yeah, dollar investment. Usually, usually not a very good deal. Ouch. You have fixed annuities, which are kind of the opposite of a variable annuity. With a fixed annuity, you're gonna have some sort of guaranteed interest rate and no fees. And you don't have to worry about losing anything. Now, the thing that you need to watch out for in the fixed annuity is whatever rate of return you're going to get is only as good as the guarantees that are available today. And in today's environment, about the best you can find on a fixed annuity is going to be about 3 to 4%. So nothing to get overly excited about, but uh, you know, 3 to 4% in a safe environment might not be bad when you compare it to some of the other alternatives. Well, let me ask you, is that a guaranteed item? Because that's what we're talking about today, mm -hmm. guaranteed income. Yeah, it is guaranteed. It's, it's guaranteed by the strength and stability of the company that you're investing in. So you want to make sure you're dealing with a highly rated, highly regarded company. Uh, there's also, depending on the state that you live in, there, there's there's uh, basically a, a uh, backstop, so it's called the Guarantee Association Fund. So if a company were to go out of business, you'd have some level of protection there as well. 
Uh, another alternative would be the index annuity, and we do a lot of work with index annuities in our office because with these accounts, they're kind of a combination of maybe the variable annuity along with the fixed annuity. You have the safety and security that you don't have to worry about losing any money, but you still have the potential for a higher rate of return when the market does grow. So you get to participate in the growth of the market without having to participate in any losses in the market as long as you're okay with agreeing to a certain amount of time before you take your money out of the account without a penalty. And certain index annuities today will have what's called income riders that will guarantee that you will have growth on your account of anywhere from maybe 4% to maybe as high as 8%, depending on the situation and depending on how much time you have to agree to before you take withdrawals. So if you have an environment where you can get somewhere between 4 and 8% in a very safe, guaranteed uh, way, this can help you make sure that you're going to have income that will, that will basically last you the rest of your life. It's one option that's available. Matt, um, before we head to the break here, I know that you authored a publication about annuities last year. Why don't we take a moment before we head to break and, and tell our listeners about it? Well, for those that want more information about the index annuity specifically, we did author a buyer's guide. Anybody that wants to call into the office and request a copy of it, it'll tell you what to look for in an index annuity and what to avoid in an index annuity. All right, everybody. You're listening to The Matt Ticken Show, where safe money is smart money. So that's our show for today. Once again, thank you for tuning in and watching. And remember, retirement planning is a journey, not a destination. We'll catch you next time. I was born and raised right here in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, started in the industry in 1997, uh, and I started Strategic Wealth Designers, my firm, which is an independent firm, back in 2002. You know, from a very young age, I always knew that this is what I wanted to do. I, I really was interested in being in a career where I could really help people. Uh, and then I kind of had a knack for money. It just kind of became a, a natural progression that I would help individuals with their investments and their retirement planning uh, goals and dreams. So it's just something that I always knew that I wanted to do. Well, I love what I do. I don't, I don't consider it work. Uh, every day I get to help somebody new typically. I love helping people and solving problems and I get to do that basically on a daily basis. I, I kind of view what we do for a living or what I do for a living is one of the most important jobs somebody can have. And it's a lot of fun helping somebody that you know is maybe four or five years from retirement and taking them all the way through until they're officially retired and enjoying it and you know doing the traveling and, and doing the hobbies and passions that they had always helped to pursue. That's the most rewarding thing that we get to do over the course of the year. Uh, we're gonna continue to help as many people as we can in the community. We, we built our dream home here. The business is located here. Our friends are here. Our family is here. Our clients are here. We don't ever see ourselves leaving, and I really enjoy what I do for a living. Um, at this point, you know, we're not necessarily working because we have to. I got started at a really early age. I've been fortunate. Um, I, I wouldn't have to do all the things that I do, but I want to continue to do the things that we do, like the radio show, the TV show, and the educational classes, because we want to help as many people as we can have a secure, successful retirement, and I'm going to do it for as many years as I can moving forward. 